Brooklyn in the get down. Understand that. We not going we ain't finna be focused, and I did say finna. We not finna be focused on that because we know it's coming. We're gonna build a structure so strong that when the Asian provocateurs and the sellouts and the traders come along, we're gonna go up, blip in the blip in the uh uh a blip on the radar, we're gonna keep it for moving. And an example of that is this. Those have been peaceful protests throughout the United States of America. If there have been some uprising and some nefarious activities, people looting and things like that, yes. But that is the result of Asian provocateurs. If you don't believe that is true, all you do is go to TMZ when you see the sister in Philadelphia saying, why are you writing Black Lives Matter on that? Why are you doing that? That's not what we need you to do. And the dude is like, "Boo, don't you hate Trump? She was like, yeah, I do hate him. But that don't have nothing to do with that. Another thing, who the hell organized bricks, pallets of bricks to be set in the street? That's not a, 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 that's not a, 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 a uprising or a protest. That's violence. And that's when you get rubber bullets popped at your ass and things of that nature. See, we have to be aware that it's this term called boogie. If y'all don't know what that is, that's a white supremacist term that they saw. Look, look, these people are so weak that they saw the electric boogaloo. That's what I mean, excuse me, boogaloo. They call it electric boogaloo. They took the electric away, and that's a term that they use. So when they put them bricks and stuff out there and they kick it off, the police attack us and then they attack, attack us as well. Boogaloo. Look it up. Look it up in your urban dictionary. It's a real term. See, while we are angry, they are creating organizations to help attack us. It was a it was a, a it was a white nationalist on Twitter this week. And he said at some point the president will give us that. Uh, uh, that dog whistle tweet. He didn't use the word dog whistle. I can't remember it. But basically, he's going to give us this dog whistle tweet. And he's going to tell us to attack y'all. And you are not even going to know who's going to attack you. See, they're organizing. While we are being emotional, we have to remove the emotion from this. They are weak individuals. They're physically, mentally, and spiritually weak. And those are our strengths. So what we do is organize and move past those things. We don't have to fight their fight. We fight our fight, but we are willing to hurt you in the event it is necessary. You attack our children, you attack our women, you attack our seniors, and we will eradicate you. We will remove you from earth. And that's that's the mentality what we have to have. And then stop uh uh Stop saying, stop saying, using terms like, uh, uh, what, what, what's the term that y'all like, they like to use, uh, the term that they kill me when they use is this, uh, 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 we need to retrain the police force, police, that's not training, nobody has ever needed to train me on not killing somebody, the way the police is used the way the police is being used force against us that's not a lack of training that is par for the course that is par for the course that's not oh man if we train them how to treat us then they'll treat us better no they wouldn't they just kick you in your head with, with different training nobody's ever had to tell you hey man don't kill somebody Nobody has nobody has ever had to say that. Hey, I don't think you should kill anybody. I don't think you should put your foot on somebody's neck. I don't think you should hurt people. Nobody's ever had to train. That's not training that you need to have. This is a culture that is developed. So once you stop saying, oh, we're going to have to train them how to teach us. No, you don't. We're human beings. If you don't want your mama to get her ass kicked, you ain't going to kick my mama's ass. So if you don't want your brother to have his foot knee on his neck, you're not going to put your knee on somebody's neck. So training is not the key. When you organize and you become strong enough to 
to defeat whatever they have in front of you, then people come to the table and start negotiating with you like a human being. But see, we keep trying to work within a system that is inherently designed to stop us from succeeding. And when you know that, you have to fall back, regroup, and move forward. Another thing, like this this back to the Asian provocateur thing. You know, in D.C. the other day, do you know all of a sudden pallets of water appeared on, on street corners? So because nobody's falling for the brick get down anymore. But if you pick up water and the police show up, you throw the water, you get shot by the rubber bullet and you get hurt. We have to always be thinking, as I stated, as the brother Joe Madison always says, you must listen with a third ear. You must watch with a third eye. Realize what's going on. And then you can prevent, as we say, the fuck boy shit. That's just it, man. We have to prevent it. Now. Again, with this money thing, don't be bought off, please. Don't be bought off. Because when you allow these people to offer you money and funds, they will numb you to what's going on. We have missed two warnings in the last 16 years. The first warning was the brother Barack Obama let you know black has no legal standing on the time during the morning show. Look, well, out, They probably scrubbed it from the internet at this point. But he's letting you know. When you see brothers like the brother from the uh, Crip organization, Big U here rolling 60, he mentions it in those Vlad TV interviews that a lot of us watch. Look up a Black Laws Dictionary. Find out what's going on. This week in Chicago, I can't speak about anywhere else, Sister Lightfoot, a lot of us mad at her right now. Whatever. But she offered you a way out as well. You had to be listening with a third ear. Sister Lightfoot said, I'm going to allocate over $10 million in small business situations. Now, a lot of us said, whatever. But I've been telling y'all about how to get that money. And this is this ties right back into voting your people into office. You vote in the right state representative, the right state senator, the right alder- alderman, and then life will put that money out there for poor and disenfranchised communities. Don't let us see. Don't get the don't get bamboozled like we got bo- got bamboozled in between sixty eight and seventy two with the affirmative act affirmative uh, 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 what is it? Uh, affirmative action. Affirmative action was created specifically for people that look like me and you specifically for people that look like me and you. So if it was created specifically for people that look like me and you, why is it that white women benefit from it the most? See, those are statistics that don't nobody want to talk about. You do hear white nationalists and these old trifling ass politicians always say, well, we don't like affirmative action, but white women benefit from affirmative action more than any group in the United States of America. Now, with that being said, when Sister Lightfoot put that money out there, what we need to be doing is getting in contact with one of our studious friends. Everybody got a studious friend. Everybody got a friend who know a lot about business. Everybody got a friend who's an idea fairy. I just happen to be one of the idea fairy dudes. Everybody got an idea that's willing to work and bust their ass with some connections. You and those people get together. Write out business plans, business proposals for small businesses like grocery stores, corner stores, and things of that nature, and put them in our un- in, in our universe so we can in these uh, food deserts as well as create these stores, corner stores, small grocery stores, and even a large grocery store if you can get the money for it. But if you're not willing to write out the plan, then guess what's going to happen? She said. These are for minority stores. Guess what? The Arabs going to get them. The Asians going to get them. The Latinos going to get all that money. But the Latinos, Asians, and Arabs, they already have stores. So if you don't take the time to get this money, it's your fault. Because now that boulder is rolling downhill on top of your head. We don't have to continue to be left behind, brothers and sisters. What we can do is link up with somebody who knows a little something and they know somebody who know a little something 
and so forth and so on and get this foolishness out the way I'm about to wrap this up y'all and I got one more thing uh I've been speaking about not kicking brothers and sisters in the ass and doing all that type of stuff. But I was watching this special with the brother uh, Kenny and Ernie and, and, and Charles. And this is not the time. I'm going to go back to the Drew Brees thing. This is not the time to tell white folks it's okay and pat them on their back and start caping for them. It's not the time for that. Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal, a.k.a. Charles Barkley Jr. They on there caping for Drew Brees. And and, and Shaq is talking about how he heard how the team, he was privy to their Zoom and how the brothers in the locker room forgave Drew Brees and the community shouldn't be mad at Drew Brees and yada, 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 this, that, and the third. Look, I got some uh, white friends. They some real good people. But I also know some white people that have said some ignorant shit around me. And I don't fuck with them no more. One of them is listening to the show right now. He got angry once. And said the word nigga. And I bipped on his ass. And he apologized. I don't mess with him no more. But... He's connected to some good white people. I know some when we see each other, we just nod and that's it. I'm never going to speak up for him because you know what? He destroyed all that equity he put out there with me by running that word, man. Yeah, I bipped on him and it should have been cool, but it's not going to be cool because you don't get angry. I don't get angry and call him a cracker, a honky a peck of wood or nothing like that. So don't get mad at another brother and use that word, man. Or you're going to get fucked up. Charles and Shaq was up there caping for Drew Brees. And it took a white guy to step up and say, nah, man, he should know better. We ain't for that, man. See, when you are part of a righteous cause, righteous people will step up. I don't know if Ernie Johnson was serious or I'm not finna take Ernie Johnson and put no post up of him in my in my in my in my den or nothing. But I appreciate the fact that Ernie had the wherewithal to say, look, Charles, Shaq, no. Cut it out, knock it off. And that's what we do more times than not. I don't see no, I don't see legions of white reporters on CNN and and all the other networks going, no, no, man, the brothers, the sisters, they cool. Yeah, just a couple of them. Or I know homeboy said something wrong, but yeah, come on, man, we, that's just one thing. No. So instead of putting that cape and energy towards Drew Brees, I'm going to ask everybody to cape for somebody on your camp. It's somebody that has pissed you off in the last 6, 12, 8, 10, 5 months, whatever. Give them some forgiveness. But all but one person. I'm speaking for myself. I'm not forgiving that person. But I ain't going to ever meet them, meet them with no angst. But I'm not forgiving them. DJ Knox know who I'm talking about. But. I'm not going to be angry with that person, but I'm never going to deal with them. But I'm asking y'all to step up. And if you have eyes for somebody, you know, I'm not asking you to deal with them. I'm just saying in the event that an opportunity comes about in which you can do business with this person do business with them or if you have to support that person in a bad situation because people who are opposed to our community are opposing them step up to that we don't have room to be angry with people anymore we really don't and with that being said i want to thank each and every one of you guys for tuning in to build for this network 
I want to thank y'all for tuning in to Building the Straw.